Good morning. Uh, I want to welcome everybody to the Integrate and Educate Custom Apps in Higher Education webinar featuring James Wesolowski from Calibri Solutions, LLC. So before we get started, a little bit of technical information. Uh, we are using uh, GoToMeeting, GoToWebEx today, so uh, you can listen to today's presentation through your computers or your, uh, your phone. If you have any technical issues with the uh, broadcast, you can call Citrix at 888-259-8414. Uh, very important, we're going to have a question and answer session afterwards, so um, we're not going to interrupt to answer the questions in the meantime, but at, at the end of the hour, at the end of the 45 minutes, we're going to, we're going to take all the questions and, and try to answer as many of them as we can. So just uh, to, 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 to ask a question, you just go to the questions tab, type in your question, hit submit, and we will try to get to as many of those as we can at the end of the session. I think we already covered that, so you just go to the questions tab and control panel, click the question section, and hit send. And we will, again, try to answer as many as we can. So today's presentation presenter, James Weslowski, uh, is from Calibri Solutions in New York City. He is the founder and managing principal of Calibri Solutions, LLC. They uh, specialize in custom database apps process and change management consulting for, uh, and his, his focus is a lot on higher ed. He's been doing this over 25 years uh, with the FileMaker platform uh, and also connects to you know, SQL backends on the back end. He's presented at numerous FileMaker developer conferences, uh, gotten very, very high marks at those uh, developer conferences. Again, his specialties are education and research applications, facilities and inventory management, creative apps, and from FileMaker solutions that scale to uh, large numbers of users. And he's been a member of the FileMaker Business Alliance member and he's been a FileMaker reseller since 1998. So with that, I'm gonna turn this over to James and uh, take it away, James. Thank you, Darren. Hi, everyone. Um, welcome to the webinar today. Um, we're going to go through this and when there's questions at the end, I'll be happy to take as many as I can. I'm very excited about FileMaker and the role that it can play in higher education and really the role that it can play in higher education at a large scale. So our central premise today is that all higher educations make big investments in their student information systems, also called SIS systems. But there is a huge universe of mission critical activities that go beyond what your typical SIS is fundamentally focused on, which would be your student demographics, your grades, uh, your course schedules, and of course, um, making sure that payments are made through the bursar's office. And I've found in many years of working with the FileMaker platform that it is really the premier tool for helping to complete the ecosystem of applications within higher education. So today, we're going to try to convey some of the excitement, try to get people thinking in new ways about how they can use FileMaker in a university, a higher education setting, and talk about some examples of what you might be using FileMaker for. Uh, so the webinar goals are to, first of all, talk a little bit about the stakeholders within a university setting. Uh, the main two in our experience being the IT, and the other ones being the departments who have to use the applications every day. So we're gonna look at one of their primary goals when they're looking at custom applications. Uh, we're gonna talk about some custom app ideas for a variety of key areas in education, which are typically not the core functionality of your student information system. We're also going to look at some of the value and the impact that can be gained from using FileMaker as the tool for those custom apps in education. I want to explore briefly uh, whether the, the decision about whether we're going to develop a custom app internally using internal resources, what FileMaker likes to call the citizen developer, whether that's uh, someone in IT or someone at the department level itself, or whether you go uh, with one of the FileMaker Business Alliance consulting members. 
and briefly also go over uh, the current licensing options for FileMaker in higher education. If you're a group, uh, if you're in a, at a university, perhaps you have a small uh, license and you're thinking about expanding it, what's the current uh, uh, landscape for licensing FileMaker in higher education? So I want to start by looking at a typical uh, student information system ecosystem. This is things that we've seen at many universities based on our experience. Um, and what we often find when we come when we meet a new uh, university is that there is the main student information system and it's the hub of all computing that goes on, uh, all data management and computing that goes on at a university. And typically around that you have a constellation of support apps. Uh, and these can be support apps that maybe take care of registration or on online uh, activities or other core needs of the university when it comes to managing students. And uh, typically those will uh, engender multiple platforms, which means that we have multiple vendors uh, that are working uh, with the university and in incorporating their programs into the student information system. And often the other needs that are also mission critical but don't fall into those really main categories get tend to get relegated to smaller apps a lot. I see a lot of Excel. I see a lot of Google Docs nowadays. Um, and people are trying to manage their data in these ways. It's not always the most optimal way to do it. Um, so when we talk to departmental stakeholders at universities, so these are some of the things that we find out from them are really important to them. Obviously, the most important thing is they have a job to get done or they have a mission to fulfill. And so they need to manage everything that goes into that as easily and efficiently as possible. Um, they obviously also have budgets and they can't stray from those budgets, especially in public institutions. So they want to know that they can stay within a budget. Uh, they have government compliance requirements, FERPA, which is uh, uh, designed to make sure that student information, critical student information is not let out uh, to the uh, out of control, out to the public, uh, and they need to make sure that they're able to stay within FERPA compliance. They usually have many roles within their departments or within their operations, and those are oftentimes student workers who need a very small subset or have a very specific need within the program. And those student workers are also ones that tend to change very frequently. So somebody will get a student job and it incorporates working with an application and they might have that student job for a semester or a year and the following semester or a year, there's new people that have to come on, they have to be trained and it has to be simple for them to use and pick up on. Secondly, uh, furthermore, they want the flexibility to modif modify the application as needed because in a lot of departments, uh, what happens is they start out with a subset of, of activities that they want to manage and as time goes on there's more and more that they need to manage or what they're doing and the focus of what they're working on changes. So they want to be able to have the flexibility to modify an application easily and without having to start over again. And the other thing is that people still love their, their Excel and they still love their outside applications. They still feel the need to get that data out of their application so they can use it somewhere else. So they need access to that data outside of the custom app. On the other hand, we also work with a lot of higher education IT, especially as our solutions start to scale. If you have a small application that perhaps started in an office of a, of a department, maybe there were a few users, maybe it was on a small Mac mini or a small PC, and you managed to start building an application. And as it scales, it catches the eye of IT. And maybe there's other things that need to be done with it that require IT uh, um, uh, attention. Or maybe you're at an institution where IT just makes decisions about what can and cannot come through the door in order to maintain security and some sort of control overall. What they're telling us is that they'd like to see third-party custom applications that minimize the impact on their IT resources. They're mostly focused on keeping the large institutional applications like the student information system and like email and major office apps and internet. Those are their primary concerns. And they want to make sure that the smaller applications that work in concert with the student information systems don't take up too many of their resources. 
The other thing is they want to support IT standards. So every institution has certain standards that have to be supported. Do we do everything with single sign-on? Do we support LDAP and Active Directory? Do we have to have everything on Windows or do we have bring, bring your own device? Are all the servers Linux or Windows? Um, does everything have to be for obviously secure and, and FERPA compliant? These are all questions that really take up bandwidth with, the, with higher education IT, and we have to be able to say that we can do this. The other thing is that they want to maintain compatibility with, the, compatibility with their existing infrastructure. They might have a server farm, and if we need to put, a, and we want to add a new application to do something new in a department, they want to be able to simply add that to their existing operation. And they would also like to minimize, frankly, the number of third-party vendor relationships. So with each major application, often you get a new application and a new vendor and a new group of people that you have to maintain a relationship with and know how they work. And they would love to see that be as minimal as possible because it helps them get their work done and keeps them from being distracted from their core operation. So how does a FileMaker platform excel? I love using FileMaker in higher education because it does many things very, very well. It's got, it creates incredibly cost-effective custom apps. And because it's FileMaker, we can provide the exact functionality that's required in every situation. We're not buying an app off the shelf and, and hoping that we can, that it fits what we need or changing our process in order to work with it. It provides, uh, FileMaker provides a comparatively low total cost of ownership and a really significant return on investment, which when we're talking about budgets in these departments is incredibly important. Uh, FileMaker can easily support FERPA standards and other security standards uh, with its use of um, authentication schemes, SSL, uh, encryption at rest. These are all things that help support the kinds of standards and requirements that we find in education. And we can certainly do things within FileMaker's security scheme that support FERPA requirements and make sure that data is only available to the people who need it and no data gets out into the wild. Furthermore, FileMaker can very well integrate with existing SISs, whether that's through ODBC and SQL or file sharing, or uh, in today's world, REST APIs, FileMaker can accommodate the different ways in which you are going to bring a custom app in and then integrate with an existing student information system. You can use a single custom app across all the devices. So if you have users that need to use it on a browser, or if you have users that need to use it on an iPad or an iPhone, or on a mobile browser, or on a PC or Mac, all those can be accommodated with a single application, which is something that can happen with a lot of platforms and a lot of applications. It is really something that when you're thinking about whether should I, should I extend FileMaker out to different places in my university, it is really something that is super powerful that comes right out of the box with FileMaker. And because you're building different applications with one platform in FileMaker, and FileMaker can accommodate so many different needs, you're also going to tend to minimize your platforms and the vendor relationships. So this is what an SIS ecosystem might look like with FileMaker. You might, you might reduce the number of, of support apps that you're ne needed, but most importantly, you get fully customized apps for each of your needs. So you can add additional processes to the ones that you're already uh, accommodating in your ecosystem. You can minimize the number of platforms. If you're working with one, one vendor who can create a range of FileMaker applications, or you have someone within IT that is really a, an expert at FileMaker and can build applications for different departments, you can have fewer vendors or fewer people supporting those apps. And all of that results in a range of additional needs to, uh, addressed than you might get without the FileMaker platform. So, what I'd like to spend a few minutes uh, talking about now are some ideas. I think we all work every day in the work that we're doing, and sometimes we don't think about, well, what else could I use technology for? And so today, one of the things I really want to accomplish with everyone is get people thinking about additional things that we might use FileMaker for in an education setting other than what we might already know. So I'm going to talk about a few examples of thing, work that we've done and that we've seen in education that might get you thinking about how you might use FileMaker. So 
for residential app, there's a whole range residential life, there's a whole range of apps that we can build with FileMaker. And these will be apps that will integrate with your student information system. So some of the things that we've done include dormitory logs, where we're tracking what happens on a daily basis, uh, the RA selection process. So residential assistants need to get selected every year as an interview process and a selection process. We need some sort of tool in order to track the everyday interactions between RAs and the residents and residence halls every uh, throughout the year. And finally, another idea is mobile event attendance. So we have events throughout campus, especially with residential life. There's activities at the dorm level and at the residential level that, we, that people participate in all the time. They register and they attend and they want to know who is there. And it can be used later on for reporting or for giving students non-academic credit. So you can build a, a mobile event attendance app with a file uh, with FileMaker that will then integrate in with the information that you have in your student information system. So imagine a system in which you are creating an event, you're taking attendance, you're taking attendance, people are signing up for, a, for a, an event, and you can send in a, a message out to people on whatever uh, smartphone they have, and via their browser, use FileMaker Web Direct to take attendance for that event. At one of the universities we work with, that's exactly what they do. They'll get a, a, a university attendance list, they'll send it out to people who are gonna manage that via an email, and it'll open up straight into a Web Direct session, and they can do that on both their iPhones and their Android phones. And what that allows them to do, it allows them to do fast attendance taking with a bring your own device. They don't have to, they don't have to write names on a, on a sheet and then enter them into a system later on. So it reduces manual data entry. It also reduces error. And it creates more accurate reporting for who attended events later on. So that's a great way to use FileMaker and FileMaker WebDirect and the devices that people have in their pockets already. Next, we do a lot of applications with student activities and events. So these can be residential assistant-led events in the dorms. It can be clubs and club membership and club activities. It can be everything that happens in the student center. Usage of the rooms, meet, going to the front desk to find out what's going on in student life, uh, joining clubs, other things that happen at the front desk in a student center. It can also be student activity board concerts and taking and doing ticketing within a system. If I have a system that's incorporated in a FileMaker system that's connected in some way to a student information system, I know who the students are and I can sell tickets to those students relatively easy with their student IDs. One of the things that we've done with, with uh, 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 universities is do club management where we're doing budgets and club attendance and club membership so we created a custom app for clubs where we're tracking both their membership and their event management and that's all integrated with the students SIS records so they can get credit for a being part of clubs and so the impact of building a, a custom app within FileMaker that also tracks uh, through to the student information record is that we can give students appropriate credit for their club involvement. And we know how clubs are doing in terms of month of, of a, uh, semester to a semester attendance really easily. So we can do a better job of allocating budgets and resources to in individual clubs. And then in the case of one of our clients, um, they chose to use the FileMaker application as a way of replacing a an Excel spreadsheet in order to do their automated term reporting. So if every semester they need to know what's the impact of being part of a club, how does that affect GPA? How does that affect people who are in dorms or not in dorms? How many people attend uh, who will participate in clubs who are from different uh, years of the university? Uh, what about gender? What about race? All this stuff is information that comes from the student information system, and it can be combined with the system that we build in FileMaker in order to create an automated report. And at the university that I'm thinking about right now, they used to spend four to five days to pull all this information together from different places, spreadsheets and 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 student information system to get them into one report. And we've managed to pull that in and do charting and graphing inside FileMaker in 20 seconds a semester as opposed to four or five days of student use.
So that's, that's a powerful way to use FileMaker uh, for this purpose. Another great use is for student engagement and volunteerism. Most universities give students a way to give back to the community, and they do that for credit and non-academic credit. And you need to track what you're doing with students and you track the impacts of the work that they do. But you also have some very much more mundane things that need to be done, one of which is student transportation. So imagine a situation where I have, at any given time, on any given day, I might have four or five events. And I'm already using my FileMaker system to track my students and who's registered for a particular event on a particular day. Let's say I have tutoring at a local school and I have, I have five people in the morning and five people in the afternoon and tomorrow I have a different number of people and they each need to be driven from campus to the school and we need to give them appropriate credit for showing up. So what we can do is we can track everything that happens with community events and ongoing volunteerism by attaching a FileMaker solution to the student information system in order to track their tutoring and special events. Now, one of the amazing things that we've been able to do with FileMaker is that we've been able to use it as a way to track student transportation. Think of it. Every event has to have students get to that event. So we have to track students and who need rides, where those, where those events are happening, the vehicles that we have available to us, and the drivers that we have available to us. And those drivers are often student drivers who have schedules of their own, class schedules, inter intramural schedules, sports, et cetera. So we need to have some way to track those three different aspects of a very straightforward thing, which is student transportation. And what we use FileMaker for is pulling in information from different locations. A student schedule might come from the main, SI, main student information system. The registrations might come in from a, a university web uh, reg registering system. The vehicles might come from a different, a different uh, set of information. We need to pull it all together. And that's what we can do with inside a FileMaker app. And we can use FileMaker Go to take, ta to take uh, uh, attendance when people show up at a location or show up for their ride. And all of that's in, in, incorporated into one system that tracks that aspect of student engagement. So what it gives us is a way to efficiently manage a very complex process with many different data points. It allows the university to create an appropriate staffing and resource management system where you know you have enough vehicles, you have enough drivers, and everyone's getting where they need to be. And that allows you to fulfill those volunteer commitments that the students have made in the community and that you've made in the community. And that's a really powerful way of using FileMaker. Another way is through campus security. Think of it, uh, campuses have many thousands of students. They often have a police or security force. And there's lots of things that can go on in a university that needs to be tracked. And FileMaker can be a wonderful way to do a series of different custom applications. So perhaps you need to uh, do campus permit parking enforcement where you're handing out permits to students and, and staff and you will need then to enforce parking across campus. Uh, perhaps you need to manage your judicial conduct, uh, things, incidents that happen on campus with students. Perhaps you have uh, a dorms and you want to manage damage billing or you have a persona non grata database that you need to make available to everyone across campus. So at a glance, anyone who has a computer open can have a, can have a picture of everyone who's been determined by the campus police to be persona non grata on campus. And this can extend to every dorm and student center and other facilities. And it's a great use of FileMaker where you can store, you can store photographs and inf other information and make that immediately available at a glance to folks at the front door of any facility. Now, at at least one of our uh, uh, universities that we've worked with in the past, uh, they had uh, permit parking. And they used to use a, an access application, and they used to do a lot of double data entry. And information was sent in a spreadsheet over to their bursar system for payment. 
And it could take weeks and weeks and weeks for this whole swirl to, uh, uh, to work itself out. So we knew that they had FileMaker and we could use a custom app that would manage the permit parking enforcement, would allow students to use FileMaker Web Direct to, to submit their permit applications via a browser. They'd get their permits. And then throughout the course of the year, the, the campus security officers have an iPad with FileMaker Go and an app that allows them to take mobile tickets. They can take a photograph or multiple photographs of, of a violation. They can print out a ticket using an attached mobile printer. And that information goes straight back into, into their FileMaker system, which is then straight back into their bursar system via integration with their student with their major student information system and you can use odbc for this you can use rest apis in order to transfer that information back and forth between the two applications but filemaker is an incredibly cost effective way to build parking management applications so you get a very cost effective parking management system that's immediately integrated with the student body and with the ids you get audit you can automate the integration with your bursar system so that tickets are paid promptly. And as a result of being able to take pictures and hold on to pictures of the violations themselves, you can reduce the on-campus ticket appeals. If you work in a university and you have any, have any experience with permit parking, you know that everyone wants to appeal their ticket. And this is a good way to reduce the number of ticket appeals, in, uh, uh, maximize the total number, amount of revenue that's, got, that, that's obtained through parking and also make the process that much easier for everyone who's involved. Finally, I wanna just talk really quickly about some other ideas. So we have residential life and student activities and volunteerism and student engagement and campus security and all the little different things you can do there. But there are so many more apps that can be built with FileMaker really cost effectively for education. And they can be built incrementally. So Perhaps you can do research management applications where you're using FileMaker in order to manage basic research uh, and basic research facilities. Um, we've been involved uh, with building uh, faculty tenure and sabbatical tracking. A lot of uh, faculty management uh, is done either through, through very expensive apps or more often through very large file cabinets where we just have a million letters of uh, appointment and review and you have to kind of tease out where people are and are they are they do a sabbatical are they ready for promotion and that can become very time consuming and it's very simple to create a file maker application that combines all of that does all that document management but also tracks all the dates and all of the status and really makes that process so much more easier for people in a provost's office that are trying to manage faculty tenure. You can also do grant management. We know several universities where FileMaker is used as the main tool to manage all the grants that come from all different places to different departments and professors. Uh, we use, we use uh, in, in incorporation with student information systems and the student ID card, we have universities that use FileMaker as a very quick student, student time clock where they log in, they're presented with a screen that says swipe in and swipe out, and that's all they have to do. And in the background, we manage all of the time cards and time sheets. A very simple application, but a very powerful application that can be added onto your FileMaker environment. And finally, we do systems where we're doing lots of equipment management across campus. Obviously, all of your hardware and all of your equipment and all of your furniture has ID tags across an institution, and FileMaker is a great tool for doing that. And you can imagine that you can combine a very straightforward FileMaker application with mobile apps in order to do inventory management and tracking while you're walking around with an iPad or an iPhone. So a great use of FileMaker's ability to work across devices on campus. So this is just a, a, a cross section of great ideas, I think, for how to expand your current engagement with FileMaker to many different areas in education that may be underserved by the big iron database applications that are associated with an SIS. Now, 
I like to also think about what is the impact when you choose to use FileMaker as a custom, FileMaker and build custom apps with FileMaker. One of the things you might know from work if you work with FileMaker already is that it is a very inexpensive way of prototyping an idea. I don't know that I want to do this, but I need a quick way to build a prototype of an idea to determine whether it's something we want to put real budget towards and pursue. Whether that we pursue that inside FileMaker or with another tool, FileMaker is a great way to look at, I've got an idea and it works with a smartphone or it works with a tablet or it works on a browser. And I want to figure out whether that's an idea that we can really pursue. FileMaker is a great way to inexpensively prototype ideas. And we've done it with many universities where then we've gone on and built a, a larger application. Because FileMaker does a great job of incremental development, of adding features and functionality easily as time goes on, you can build a core application and then add additional parts to it. So you get this whole concept of apps within apps. So if I have an application that manages certain things about the student population, and I want to add little parts to it, kind of like the student time clock I was just talking about, you already have a certain amount of information and you're adding a function. And it can live as its own app, but it lives with also within the greater FileMaker world. We also find that with FileMaker, you get a, very, a much shorter development cycle than you do with a lot of other tools that, have, that are very complicated to work and build applications with. And I'm thinking of the oracles of the world and the SQL servers and some web apps. And because you have a shorter development cycle, that means that more apps can happen within the current fiscal year budget. A lot of departments and universities set budget within a year, and if it can't happen within the year, it's hard to get that budget for the following year. So FileMaker apps are great because they often can be built within that current fiscal year budgetary year, and things get done. You also, with FileMaker, because it's such a, uh, an expansive platform, get that one custom app for many devices. And you also have the added benefit of bring your own device computing. So if we think back to the example I gave a few minutes ago of mobile event attendance, where we're sending an email out to say, take attendance for this event and link to this, this FileMaker web direct page, that could be done on an iPhone, but it could also be done on an Android phone. And so anyone can bring their own device and take advantage of FileMaker and its ability to work across many devices. And there's two other things that I think are really important to remember when you consider whether you want to increase your engagement with FileMaker. One is it's workgroup software that stands the test of time. FileMaker uh, recently, a couple of years ago, celebrated its 30th year as a platform. And uh, that's something that almost no other platform can say. Maybe Excel, um, maybe some generic technologies, but technologies come and go and the investments that need to be made to replace them can be very expensive. And FileMaker investment once made tends to stand the test of time. You can continue to develop on a FileMaker app incrementally over time, and that saves money, knowing that FileMaker is a platform that's going to be there for you across all of your devices over the long term. And what that means is the total cost of ownership for FileMaker is extremely compelling. And somebody pointed out to me yesterday, it's extremely compelling both when you have success and oddly enough, when you have failure. When you build a successful application with FileMaker, you've done it very cost effectively and you know that it will be able to be expanded incrementally over time. And that's a compelling, that's a compelling total cost of ownership story. But also, not every project works out. People change their, their goals, program gets shut down in midstream, an idea dies on the vine, and it can be very expensive to start down with certain applications and go down that road and find out that it, that it wasn't going to reach the end point. So when they say fail, fail early and fail inexpensively, that's also something you can accomplish with a tool like FileMaker that has such a wonderful total cost of ownership. So in both success and failure, FileMaker is incredibly compelling. So we've decided we're going to take FileMaker, we're going to expand it to a bunch more uh, use cases and a bunch more departments. How am I going to build that custom app? FileMaker is a wonderful platform, but you're building, you're building a custom app each time. 
whether it's large or small. So should I build it internally or should I use a FileMaker developer from the FileMaker Business Alliance? So here's some things to think about. Should you build a FileMaker custom app internally? If I use a citizen developer, you could get started immediately in many cases, especially if the person has a little bit of familiarity with databases or FileMaker or structured programming in any way. You often end up getting the subject matter expert building the app, which can be a real plus. Uh, you can often get basic functionality in place really quickly without having to go through a vendor recruitment and, and contracting process. So you're seeing your application, at least, in, at least in its beginning stages, as quickly as possible. The person who builds that app and everyone around them also starts to learn about the custom app process and how it's different from pulling something off the shelf and the great utility that can be gained and what you need in order to, to realize the greatest benefit. And having worked with it as a citizen developer and developed an application with FileMaker, if you later on decide that you want to bring on a consultant for additional expertise, you're probably better able to work with that consultant because you have a better idea of the custom app process and you have a better idea of the FileMaker platform. So for many people, the citizen developer is at least a good place to start. Now, at some point, you might want to work with a FileMaker Business Alliance consultant, either at the very beginning of a project or somewhere during the project. There are a lot of advantages of working with FileMaker Business Alliance consultants. First of all, there are certified FBA firms across America with great experience. Uh, many of these firms have extensive higher ed experience, so they understand the, the unique goals and challenges of a higher education environment. They also have knowledge of the best practices of how to build custom apps using the FileMaker platform and how to integrate those with other technology with other applications using a variety of technologies and they'll know the best and most efficient way to build the kinds of applications that you're looking for and integrate them with other systems. So in many ways working with a FileMaker Business Alliance consultant provides the best possible return on investment especially for your more complex apps. So these are two things to think about, and they're not necessarily mutually exclusive. One can be a beginning point, and the second, an add-on. You can work with a citizen developer and uh, an outside expert at the same time, but ultimately you're going to use FileMaker to get yourself the best possible custom application for what you're looking to do. Finally, uh, I want to go over FileMaker licensing in higher education. Um, if you have done this before, uh, maybe it's been a while if, since you've last done uh, a license in FileMaker and you want to see what the current uh, situation is. First of all, everyone should know that um, there is special pricing for nonprofit educational institutions that is lower than, um, that is lower than regular commercial licensing. FileMaker can be licensed in the cloud uh, as, 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 as FileMaker Cloud. So you can license uh, to deliver solutions via the cloud, uh, via FileMaker Cloud, which is uh, delivered via Amazon Web Services and uh, licensed uh, from uh, the AWS Marketplace. You can also choose a more traditional client server uh, license uh, setup where you have a server on campus and, and, and licenses throughout the university. Uh, you can use a virtualized server as well, so it doesn't have to be strictly hardware. It can be your VMware or other virtualized server environment. The most uh, common way to license FileMaker uh, recently is via the, pro the FileMaker licensing for Teams model. And what it is is basically the number of users that you have are able to use uh, the single license across all their devices. So uh, John Smith can use uh, the single FileMaker license on his PC, on his uh, tablet via FileMaker Web Direct, um, however he needs to access a solution. FileMaker also provides, FileMaker licensing also provides for multi-year discounts, 10% on a two-year license, I believe, and 20% on third-year uh, license and you can purchase both online or from many different resellers. And these include FileMaker Business Alliance resellers such as our company, Calibri Solutions, and it's possible that you can get further discounts uh, through those FBA resellers. Uh, 
So it's worth uh, contacting your FBA member that you've worked with before or an FBA member and find out uh, how you can work with them to get the licensing that's appropriate for the expansion of your FileMaker license on campus. So uh, I'm going to switch off and we're going to take some questions. Um, and one of the things that I wanted to remind everyone is we have part two of this webinar coming up in two weeks on Wednesday, March 21st. Uh, it's called Implement and Educate uh, using the FileMaker platform in higher education. And we're going to talk about how all the stakeholders work together on custom apps and organize getting that, getting a custom app in FileMaker uh, developed and implemented. We're going to talk about some of the technical aspects of custom app development in higher education settings, including integrating FileMaker, uh, ways that you can integrate FileMaker into an SIS environment, a student information system environment. We're going to highlight some of the modern FileMaker technologies that are available to us now for doing integration and for bringing FileMaker into the world of the higher education app ecosystem. So technologies, tools, and techniques that you can use and we're also going to take a look at one or two examples of custom apps in higher education uh, that utilize all the tools that, we, that we'll be talking about. So I think it'll be a slightly more technical and perhaps uh, um, uh, a different focus on how to look at this, at this, uh, at this issue. So uh, thank you. I appreciate it, your, your time and your attention very much. And we're going to switch, the, we're going to switch off the, uh, uh, the slides now and we're going to take a look at some questions. So we're gonna we're gonna just just really quickly. Um, I got a couple of questions here. Um, uh, I have a question about um, how. Uh, question here is that we have uh, uh, in one place we have a uh, FileMaker solution, and we want to know how we can expand it to uh, other departments, and whether each department requires its own um, FileMaker server and um, and how that looks. And so the answer to, to that would be, um, it really depends on the environment that you have in front of you. Um, we have institutions where servers are held at department level and they're managed at the department level and they have their own IT support and they prefer to do it that way. A lot of institutions um, utilize one or two FileMaker uh, servers where applications of all types are maintained and then connected on to other parts of their ecosystem so that um, so you might have many different little applications built within FileMaker and they're all managed off of one server. There's no requirement to have multiple servers uh, just because you have multiple FileMaker uh, applications. Uh, Another question here, uh, tell us a little bit more about uh, mobile attendance and, and how that works with WebDirect. Um, so uh, we have done an application in the past where we have uh, taken uh, attendance for um, events and uh, the university has in as part of their SIS ecosystem a um, uh, a web-based attendance taking system for students and students already have accounts on that and that information is pushed forward to FileMaker on a scheduled basis uh, via o ODBC and um, that in, that attendance then is what goes out to um, to the people who are managing the event and what we do is we take the email of the person of the students who are managing a particular event and we might put that into a, a list and we'll send an email from FileMaker saying, here's a list of everyone who's going to this event. Uh, you, are a, you are an attendance taker, click the link. And the link to the actual page that allows people to take attendance with the data is a FileMaker web direct um, uh, solution. And so it shows through there, we've designed it to be the size of your typical smartphone browser. And because FileMaker web direct works with either uh, iOS 
uh, under Safari or Android under Chrome, they're able to pull whatever device they're coming to and uh, look at it um, and take attendance. Uh, and I think they use it at one university, they would use a, um, a little handheld scanner to scan a barcode. And that's one way to incorporate uh, FileMaker WebDirect, kind of bring your own computing and, um, and FileMaker. Um, and one, one more question here is uh, about uh, uh, research and compliance uh, using FileMaker for uh, doing research and how you maintain uh, uh, different kinds of uh, government compliance. Uh, what is your experience with research and compliance applications and can FileMaker be used to securely uh, manage scientific research? And I think that's something that's being done all over the United States already with FileMaker. There's a lot of use in FileMaker in, in, within departments. Certainly, FileMaker supports all of the current um, uh, security requirements, SSL, encryption at rest. It supports single sign-on. Uh, FileMaker has a very robust internal security schema. So um, it's a very good tool to uh, gather data uh, for managing research in, um, uh, in, in universities of all sorts. Uh, I know that we do... Uh, we build a, a research application ourselves for um, basic scientific research using animals in universities, and there's a lot of government compliance regulations that have to be uh, recorded and tracked and maintained. You have to know everything that ever happens to any animal in that environment and any facility in that environment, and we use FileMaker very effectively to help uh, institutions uh, build cost-effective solutions. Um, and use FileMaker to do so. Anything else? Uh, uh, that's uh, all the questions we have. Um, I just want to remind anyone that uh, if you'd like to send any questions offline, you can get a hold of me. I'd be happy to answer any questions. James at ColibriSolutions.com. Uh, you can also reach out to the good folks at FileMaker. Uh, about licensing and other platform issues. And I just want to invite everyone once more to uh, the next, the follow-up webinar on Wednesday, March 21st at 11 a.m. Uh, for our more, more technical webinar called Implement and Educate Using the FileMaker Platform in Higher Education. Thanks once again, everyone, for your attendance. I really appreciate it. And I hope you'll join us in two weeks. Uh, and we look forward to talking with you then. Goodbye.